And what are the statutory limits uh, put by the government of India on that noise so that everybody doesn't make like others like this? Uh, I'll start with absolute fundamentals about what is acoustics. Can everybody read from the back? Yeah. Okay. So basically, sound is a conductor wave in the air. What it really means is wave means traveling disturbance. Unlike vibration, where vibration is a one place, this is vibration but traveling vibration, and that's why it's called wave. Okay, so sound is a conductor wave in the air, but it's a conductor in the sense the particle velocity is in the same direction in which the actual wave moves. So that's why it's called longitude. 
wave is a traveling disturbance. Now, mass and elasticity of the medium are primary characteristics for a wave to travel from the source to the receiver. You know, as for example, in electrical engineering, we always have voltage and current. Here we have force and velocity or displacement or acceleration. Wave is characterized by two state variables, pressure P and particle velocity P. And perturbations, I'm sorry, perturbations depend on time as well as space. Thus, pressure is a function of distance from the source R and time T. Particle velocity also similarly is a function of R and T. So that's again, this is how again it differs from vibration. In vibration, you have only one state variables and that is time. But here you have distance and time, distance to the source. Noise is, this is sound of course, but noise is unwanted sound. This, it may be unwanted or undesirable because of its loudness or frequency characteristics. It does not get later. Uh, excessive or prolonged exposure to noise may lead to several physiological effects like annoyance, headache, increase in blood pressure, loss of concentration, speech interference, loss of working efficiency, or even accidents in the workplace. You know, I can go deeper into everything, but you know, I, I am sure all of you will understand this, this, this part. For example, if you take a foreman in a workshop, all the day he is in an environment with a lot of noise is being made. At the same time, because he is foreman, he is also uh, communicating with the people there or people outside and on having telephone talk. So all the time, what does his brain do? His brain has to really filter out the noise and then concentrate on the communication. Okay? So all the time the brain is overworking. The net result uh, is that by end of the day the man is completely exhausted. <coughs> but no apparent reason. Maybe it was all all the time, the brain has been working doubly, that is all the time keeping the noise out and then doing the work whatever it was supposed to do. The same thing it happens to all of us, particularly, uh, you know, if you are in a noisy environment and you are still studying, so naturally you, your brain has to do double the work, you know, uh, first keep, uh, keep the, that uh, noise out and then look at the thoughts and that, that's how the whole understanding goes on. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, uh, many people over the years uh, who work in this kind of environment, not, not one thing of course is every day they go home, they are exhausted, they want a cup of tea or they, they become irritable with, with family because they, for no reason, because they just that because actually they, you know, they are exhausted there. Yeah. Uh, second is of course that uh, in, a, you know, in the workplace, uh, you know, because there is a lot of noise, the person is not able to concentrate on the particular job. So what happens is either he makes mistakes there, so he is not doing the job properly, or if he is doing that also, then other result is that you know, he uh, would get headaches etc. And of course, when you are when you're, uh, subjected to it for a long time, then what, what happens is, that you become hard of hearing. You might have seen many times, you know, uh, auto rickshaw driver, uh, you know, <coughs> because he is, he is all the time in very noisy environment and parking of himself. He wants to make more money, so all the time he's accelerating, engine is making so much noise, and others are at a distance, but he is right there. So, you know, so that result is that he's, uh, he becomes hard of hearing. So, you might have seen many times when he argues with you. Uh, something you think is fighting with you. Because he is, you know, he has become like that, he has to raise his voice, you know, because that is, he has become part of it. And of course, the other thing is that, you know, a long time when that happens, uh, then of course you may have permanent damage to your breathing capacity. Anyway, so these are various things that happen. Uh, but more than that, I was talking about the accidents that can happen on the road, 
or accident that can happen uh, on the workplace that because of its noise. Okay. Now, persistent exposure of a worker to loud noise in the workplace may raise his or her threshold of hearing. You might ask why the threshold of hearing should uh, increase. It is all because of the body faculty is very adaptive. You know, if I am, you know, let, let, let's say I can hear from some level minimum to action so much. And because I am getting all the time more noise, you know, my brain starts getting adjusted to that part and therefore loses this side. So his threshold of hearing increases. The same thing happens in my even hearing, even the, the, the eyes, eyesight. You might see that so suddenly some, uh, you know, somebody is coming with uh, using high beam. And because of that, even when the high beam passes off, it takes you one second or something before you can get used to where the road is. You know, because again, body and home during that time had got adjusted to very high level of uh, you know, light and therefore you could not see the lower part of light or lesser light. So body adjusts and that's what happens to become a higher place. Okay. Right. Now, the main thing I want to tell you here is the study of generation, propagation and reception of audible sound constitutes the science of others. And of course, in further in acoustics, we have various types of acoustics, but uh, here I am having to lay out an engineering acoustics. Can you see? So I'm going to the next. Now the speed at which, so I was telling you that now when, when I am talking to you, sound is going from here to your ears, anywhere if you look at a particular particle of air, it will be oscillating around its mean position, but it stands where it is. However, the disturbance is moving and moving at a speed given by you know, C, which is gamma times the gas constant R, multiplied by absolute temperature in Kelvin and under root of that. And also because using the equation of state, we can also put it as gamma times, gamma times the static pressure divided by the density. Now, uh, again, uh, let me explain to you again what is the wave. You know, I'll just tell you a uh, very, very rough uh, kind of uh, analogy I'll give. Suppose, you know, there are 100 people standing and all touching each other in a, in a queue. Somebody comes and pushes the person at the back. Now, what happens to this man? He, he goes like this, controls himself, comes back, but Already he has described the next person. Next person has been described, he also reacts like that, but comes back, but he has now disturbed the next person. So disturbance moves much faster. For example, when you work it out like this, sound speed comes to 340, typically 340 meters per second. Whereas particle is moving at least some millimeter per second. So particle velocity is very, very different and much smaller than the speed of sound. And as you know, this further, you know, if you put this values of pressure, etc., and then you finally get 20 times P and the root, which is a rough way of calculating mentally what is wrong. Now, because we are dealing with oscillating quantities, so we have to have a frequency and, and because it's moving corresponding wavelength. And how are they related to each other? Symbol T is used for the time period of harmonic disturbances as well. It is related to frequency F as follows. T is 1 divided by F or F is equal to 1 divided by T. And frequency F is measured in hertz or cycles per second. And wavelength lambda is moving disturbance. Uh, uh, the frequency is given by 
lambda, the wavelength is equal to sound speed divided by frequency L. Now, other thing I want to tell you here is that because we are dealing with uh, periodic phenomena, obviously by Fourier series, the Fourier transform, we can break it up into frequency components. And therefore, what we do is we deal with, I mean, we always assume uh, time dependence is cross omega t or sine omega t or e to the j omega t, which has, you know, is equal to cos omega t, so j sine sine omega t. So that's what I have written here. So all the time we deal with, even when we have so many frequencies uh, present at the same time, we deal with one frequency at a time. And then of course write a program and integrate all that frequencies and then we can get a local response. Now, when I'm dealing with environmental uh, noise, uh, naturally I have to deal with spherical wave. So when I'm, for example, talking to you, I, you know, my mouth is there, but sound is going in a, in a, if you, if you uh, make a hypothetical sphere around me, okay, so it will be moving like that in our direction, okay. And, uh, you know, that, of course, we start with continuity equation, momentum equation, and then, you know, we, uh, you know, eliminate what is not required, and finally we are able to get, like this, you know, second derivative, second derivative with local derivative with respect to time minus sound speed square into the equation the p into the it's basically a three-dimensional equation okay and it can you know it can because basically it will not be so simple otherwise so we put it in this form that we sort we put introduce a new variable like rp and then it, it comes down to one-dimensional derivative and, and then we can write the solution like this. I am not taking you into all that, but all I want to tell you is, look at this. The pressure P as a function of distance time P equal 1 over distance. What we write by that any amplitude that has A P to the power minus JKR plus B JKR. Now K is the wave number, omega by C. That means 2 pi F by C. And the main thing I want to tell you is that pressure at any distance is inversely proportional to the distance. Okay? That's why the 1 by R comes there. And second thing I want to tell you is that this is, first is outgoing wave and this is incoming wave. When I say outgoing, it, I, I, it is a source. What is going out is the first the integral power minus JKR. And if I really want the uh, or in a uh, spherical environment, then the sound will be reflected back to the, to the point, and then that is the second thing. So second is unimportant in detectors; it never happens unless you are having you are inside a very uh, special kind of structure where uh, you are at the center of the sphere. It doesn't happen except at very very special buildings or that. So most of the time, we will be dealing only with the first component. A, E minus A, K, R. So what we do is now, if you put this into momentum equation, so you will get a corresponding expression for velocity. And so this is the momentum equation. Okay, and then put substitute in there. And good thing is because we are dealing with the power of omega t, delta by delta t becomes j omega into that. So basically, it's a very nice thing when we deal with this, this harmonic quantity. Any time derivative can be replaced by j omega. That is, you know, i plus into 2 pi f. And then, so you get, uh, after substituting that, you get this. But now something very interesting has happened. You see here, I have the same a to the power minus jkr pressure. It is multiplied by something that is complex, real and imaginary. They are also real So if it was only real, uh, it, would it would have meant that particle velocity is proportional to pressure. But now we find that there is a complex number. So it is in some way proportional to pressure, but it is also out of phase, partly. Okay. And this is uh, what makes uh, things difficult for measurement and accommodation microphone, etc. Uh, so we are very uh, 
particular that we should be in a path field. Now, this is why I am introducing this term path field. All our uh, uh, sound measurements should be in a path field where particular velocity is proportional to pressure. <coughs> and that can, that can happen in if 1 by R, this 1 by R is much less than JK. Okay? Or KR is, should be much less than 1. And this is, can be put in other wavelengths, etc. I will tell you this later. And then that is how we get the part. But what I am trying to say is this. Uh, if I want intensity, basically you see we are not interested in pressure. Uh, we are interested in intensity, which after multiplication area can be the total power. Uh, so please I understand, I am now introducing three things. My ear responds only to pressure. Okay? But I want to know how much total power is coming out of this source or machine or whatever. Then I need power. And power is integration of intensity over areas. So I have to now tell you how the three are related. And therefore, if you measure one, how can you calculate other things and so on. Yeah. It may again be noted that the first component applications under 115 and 17 represents the spherically outgoing or diverging wave, and the second one, of course, I told you, it comes in. In that is the second component hypothetical in our practical problems dealing with noise station from vibrating bodies, one deals with the diverging wave only. Another thing I just want to tell you here is. Uh, you know, the science of noise starts with the science of vibration. So, in our institute also, we make sure that before somebody comes to me for acoustics, he has attended the course in vibration. Okay, so he, he, see, basically, it's, it's, it's very nice. I mean, once you understand this, yes, subject of vibration, you have been giving ordinary differential equations. And here, we have partial differential equations. Okay. So again, but we do the same thing by taking the time in a harmonic, we are able to break it up by into solution is function of distance and time. And that, that makes it very nice. We are able to apply the same vibration principles after sudden transformation. Now, I was telling you about path field. Let's understand what is path field and how we can make sure that we get it. The ratio of pressure and particle velocity for the developing progressive wave may be seen as such. Just whatever we got, I am writing it P by U, and finally I get this. Rho. This rho not C is a very uh, important quantity. Density times sound speed, rho not C. This is called characteristic impedance. That means characteristic impedance of the medium. Every medium has, if I don't believe, if I was talking about this table, and I, I, I strike at one end, and I want to know how this sound will travel around the sun. So I will still need characteristic impedance, rho naught c, and that, that of course will see as much higher than pressure. I mean that is here. Same thing, water, for example, rho, rho naught of water is about 1000 kilograms per cubic meter, and here is only 1.2, so ratio is almost 800. And c also. In air, it is 340 meter per second, in water, it is around 1500 meter per second. Total time to say is that four times are 800 at 3000. So basically, rho naught C of water is 3000 times approximately that of air. And when you have solids like uh, this uh, steel or whatever, uh, you will find it goes to 5000. Okay. So, so basically, what I am saying, this rho naught C is a very important quantity. And therefore, uh, you look at any book in acoustics, you will always have tables of density, sound speed, and corresponding characteristic impedance, so that you can use while solving a problem directly or various ingredients. Now, this indicates that this one, that this indicates that for a spherical diverging wave, pressure and velocity are not in phase. If it doesn't phase, then I should not have that, that other component. Now, physically, it implies that in the power field, a spherical diverging wave becomes or behaves as a plane progressive wave. 
I repeat this just see this. Physically it implies that in the path field, path field means that KR is much greater than 1. Okay, so then this uh, you know numerator denominator this that this that this becomes 1 and this B by U becomes low or C constant. So it's like a plane wave. Plane wave basically means wave the face, the front of which it is like a plane. Like for example, if I was dealing with uh, uh, waves in uh, uh, exhaust mufflers. In exhaust mufflers, you will find that you know uh, we have the exhaust pipe, a muffler, and tail pipe. So there, the wave moves like a plane. That means if you cut it like this, at any at any plane, all the particles are moving in phase. And that's why we say plane wave was as if the wave is the a complete plane uh, wave plane. Okay. <laughs> this also indicates that the microphone of the sound level meter should not be near the vibrating surface. It should be in the far field. Okay. And main thing is, so now what does really far field mean? I have already told you, but let's be more specific. Yeah, that, that part is not there. But anyway, what I am trying to say is that KR should be much greater than 1. Which is let me just give you a very rough way. Uh, if this is my source and I take the, this length as a characteristic dimension of this uh, source. Okay. Now, if I am 3 times that if this is length L, 3 L away, and I put my microphone here, I am already in the part here. So theoretically I wanted KR to be infinite, but doesn't have to be KR greater than 3 is good enough. Okay. Which really, which really means that uh, if, uh, if I'm dealing with uh, let us say source of this size, you know, then I, I should put it my microphone at around 1 meter so that it's 3 times that. And then I can make measurement all along and assume that now. Uh, pressure and velocity, they are proportional to each other and in phase. And therefore, intensity which is multiplied into you, you know, will be, uh, you know, uh, what should I say, equal to P square by something. And that is road mass. All right. Now, this is the most important thing I want to tell you today because all of you should know what kind of lesson all the time when you talk about uh, regarding noise, it is always in decibels. Okay? And I'm going to give you the definitions and explain to you what is the significance. Okay. Please take first understand human ear is a fantastic sound system. It can pick up pressure fluctuations of the order of 10 to the power minus 5 Pascal to 1000 Pascal. That is, it has a dynamic range of 10 to the power 8. Can you imagine? I mean, have you ever seen any mechanical sensor that we designed to have a dynamic range of 10 to the power 8? But you know, nature you know, has done that and which is that for eight. Therefore, the linear unit of measurement is ruled out. We have to have a determinant, only then we can give you the complete range. And universally, a logarithmic unit of decibel has been adapted for measurement of sound pressure level density level and power level. And these are defined as points. Just, just look at that. Uh, I'll, I'll start from this end, that, that lower. Sound power level, which is written as SWL or L sub W, is defined, defined as 10 to the power of acoustic power, total acoustic power coming from the source, divided by a reference point. And then that is further it comes to this. A reference is given 10 for minus 12 watts. I will tell you why later. But all I want to first tell you, all of you are engineers, that you know mathematics, you know that I cannot take a work term of a dimensional particle. I must not dimensional, only then I can talk about the opposite term. So you, that's why you see that there's pressure or intensity or power, we are dividing by something to make it non dimensional and then take log. Remember always this is very important. And Please note that reverse of that is also true. I cannot say e to the power x if x has dimensional particle. It, it must be non-dimensional 
otherwise you know, it can hurt it down. So always remember law of quantum fields has an exponential quantum field. Uh, they can deal only with non-rational arguments. All right. Now I can take you here. Some pressure level is given as SPL or L sub P is defined as 10 times the logarithm of the rate of P RMS that is mean square value of pressure divided by the threshold. And threshold is 2 newton per minus 1. Now this is a very important quantity. Uh, you know, a lot of experiments have been done uh, internationally on human beings, on various places, various countries, various groups, and it has been found that the smallest signal that human ear can pick up, uh, that is 2 to 10 power minus 5 pascal, that is 20 micro pascal. Okay? And because the range is 10 power 8, Okay, so when you divide by that, you can see when when PRMS is equal to this 20 micropascal, this becomes 1 and log of 1 is 0. So, so what we do, what we do is, we are saying that at the threshold pressure, I will say the sound is 0, 0 decibel. Actually, sound is not 0, PRMS is equal to threshold pressure. But because we are talking log of that, log of zero. So zero decibel is uh, the starting point for our ears. Okay. Uh, but let me also tell you, uh, and we'll come to that little later again, uh, that most of us uh, who are uh, have been living in cities, uh, you are in government to live in, you know, there is a more population area in Mysore in Bangalore. Uh, but we are subjected to more noise than you are subjected. So already I would be, for example, my threshold of hearing would already have risen that this continue. What you can hear and you are not going to hear. So that's the, that's the price we have to pay living in very noisy environments. Okay. So it has been found that uh, 40 decibel, all of us in city, city dwellers, all city dwellers, uh, you can hear only from 40 dB, not, in, not from 0. You can hear really only from 40 dB. Already that means that much they have lost already. Okay? Uh, of course, people who are passionately, they are living in villages, of course, they would have much better hearing than we do. Okay, so what I want to tell you here is that this is how uh, it is defined. And, and this square is taken out here and then becomes 20 here. Okay, that's how it is. And then insertion loss, which is written as IN or L sub I, is taken out of intensity level divided by reference intensity, and that becomes this. And, and mind you, this is related to that. I told you that intensity is pressure square by rho, rho not C. And so I say 2 into 10 minus 5 square divided by 400. So that comes down to minus 12. That's how the particular number has been standardized. And then of course this is the total power level. Again we do the same. Only please we have to remember always the units. The pressure is in pascals. Uh, intensity is in watts per square meter. And power of course is in watts. Intensity level at two times the distance 
minus intensity level at a particular distance is equal to 10 log of r square divided by 2 r square and that is of minus 6 degrees. Now basically uh, understanding is very important. If let's say you know uh, this boy is sitting at the, there at 3 meters from here and other person sitting 6, six uh, meters from me, uh, what he is hearing is 6 decibel less than what this gentleman is saying. And it can continue like this. So what I'm trying to say is that take for example an aircraft in the air and let us say uh, at one, and one meter it will make it uh, 140 decibel. Two meters it will be 134, 60 less. Four, 128. Uh, uh, another eight, it won't the distance <coughs> and it will be 60 degrees less and it will have been That is what is in one scale law. And now I'm going to define, uh, you know, this thing I told you that uh, on pressure level is respect to pressure, power level is to power. But then, you know, you also know that power is intensity integrated over the area, and intensity is the most important radius. So then, finally, we come like that. And then I'm skipping all the algebra. Uh, I'll just give you here. For spherically geologic waves, the sound pressure level like the distance r from a point source is related to the total sound power level as follows. LPR is LW plus N log of the directionality constant divided by 4 pi r square. And you understand 4 pi r square is the uh, uh, sphere of the area, surface area of the sphere of radius r. And Q is interesting, uh, interestingly, uh, Q to the power of number of surfaces is cutting. For example, if my source is in the air, it's not cutting any surface, okay? Then that N is 0, so 2 to the power 0 is 1, okay? So that it will be 1, so 1 by 4 by R square, that means that, that radius R, it will go like that. Now, most of the time, all mechanical engineers are dealing with machines and we are lying on the ground. So they are touching one, one, one subject is touching. So you have to the power one. And that is how this, uh, this becomes to this. Sound pressure level, the radius r, is equal to total power level minus 10 log of 2 pi r. And physically, and it's another, it has another meaning that when I, it is on the ground, whatever sound comes out, we go into the hemisphere. It can go under the ground. Okay? It will go into hemisphere. The hemisphere uh, surface is 2 by R square. No. Thanks. I think there is some problem there. Excuse me. If you are not interested, please be no problem. But don't disturb others. All the time you are doing that. And be careful. Okay. Now I want to send you here this and telling you that the uh, human ear is very fantastic transmission. Not only it has but there is a power eight range. You know. It also it's the, the Kansi range is also fantastic. Look at that. The human ear responds to sounds in the frequency range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. Although the human speech range is 125 hertz to 8,000 hertz. Now, I just want to tell you here uh, <coughs> precisely male speech lies between 125 to 4,000 hertz. And female speech is one octave of the they have to go higher. So female speech is one octave higher means from 250 level of 125 and to 28,000 level of 4,000. So if you take the Indian or human beings of ages together, minimum is 125 and maximum is 8,000. If you now take the geometric mean of that, 825, 8,000, and the root, it is 1,000 hertz. So 1,000 hertz is a standard frequency 
for all nation members. I repeat, you know, our standard we can see is one thousand per cent, and then we make offset that one thousand come down five hundred, two fifty, one twenty five, sixty three, etc. On this side, I go to two thousand, four thousand, eight thousand, sixteen thousand. So one thousand is the reference around which all the offset bands and non bands are made. And the auditor's frequency range is divided into octal and non-cut octal. So basically what we do is we have a top of octal band. Uh, it is upper frequency divided by lower frequency. The ratio is 2. And, we, and mean frequency is the geometric mean of the upper and lower that is defined like this. And, and now when you solve this together, you will find that at lower is equal to 70.7% of mean and upper is, you know, this 14, 1.414 into 2 meters. Uh, this, this I am telling you for two reasons. Uh, one is that uh, most of the time it is not enough for us to understand how much is mass. We also want to know the frequency rate. For example, as a, as a person who is dealing with noise control, my control does not work the same way at every frequency. The first thing I have to do is, I not only have to know how much the noise, but what is the frequency spectrum on the noise. And the frequency spectrum is made in terms of octave bands. And same thing in the music. You know, you have music, the tones, those things are there. Those are also basically dealing with, you know, octave, one third octave and so on. And uh, typically, uh, you know, most of us, and I, I can't speak more than two to half of the season. But any of you would be able to do maybe three of the or even singing particularly some people can do four of the I remember once uh, sitting you know, uh, in a concert and uh, that, that singer, a uh, very famous singer and the person sitting next to me oh, she's going, I think four of the Apparently she he knew much more about music, I didn't know that. But he could recognize that by hearing that the lady, the singer, is covering four and the range of four of tapes of frequency. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is our our uh, uh, I mean, speech has limits. So the four of tapes we feel proud of. But actually in hearing wise they can go from 30 hertz to uh, 30,000 hertz. Okay, so our ear is a much much better uh, uh, you know, uh, transducer than our vocal cords. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I was just telling you, you know, that uh, the standard frequency happens to be uh, geometric mean of the human speech. You can see that 125 the lowers, 8000 under root of the geometric mean of the two, so that is the problem. And also I told you the two to power, uh, that you know, it's the one hundred octave, two to power one is one point and two six. Okay. Anyway, let's not worry about all that. What I want to tell you here is that for particular purposes, two to the power one by three is equal to ten power one by ten. That's why working either way around one thousand hertz, hundred hertz, two hundred hertz, etc. Uh, is that they represent the mean frequency of the respective one third of the band. And in the single frequencies, in the, state, in the second and fifth problem, I'm going to show you a table that, that I think is Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Actually, whatever uh, slide that I made is from my book. And anybody wants uh, to see, I can show you later. Not only that, at the end of this lecture, I am giving you a few slides about the book so that you can load down what I want. And actually, it was a very good reason. Okay. Now, the human ear responds differently to sounds of different frequencies. Extensive audiological surveys have resulted in waiting <coughs> for different purposes. Originally, A waiting was for sound levels below 55, B was below 55 to 85, C was below. But these are shown in the. Yeah, 
I think this is better. Uh, you please see here, uh, let us take the 0 dB, uh, just for reference. And then this uh, C weighting is almost true, that you know, it covers like this. So almost it is 0, that means that is factor of 1. So it is very helpful. But our human ear has a response of this like A. Look at this A. You can see here at the uh, 61 hertz, you know, it is 30 dB, which really means if I hear a sound of 63 hertz, it would be appear to me to be 33 dB less loud than the corresponding sound at 1000 hertz. You know, which really means, in, I mean, in general, I can make a statement that this tells me that human ear uh, can uh, hear much less or feels the loudness much less at lower frequencies and in fact a little more at higher frequencies. Now, this is, this is the best thing God could have done to us because our all machines processes as mechanical engineers we design, they are all low noise producing machines. In other words, you know, God is kind to us that you know, in advance we can make sure that we are not over disturbed by our own actions. Okay? So that, that is what I want to tell you. But then it has other implications of noise control I found it just now. Now another thing I was telling you that uh, uh, we don't hear sound from a single source. Even when, let us say, I have a high control from a changer with me. Now, noise is coming from the uh, combustion induced vibrations of the, uh, you know, knock. Also from the walls, exhaust, intake, gear system, transmission, etc. and so on. So, when I have to deal with noise control, uh, I have to have different kind of machines but each of those sources. I, I repeat, I have to have different kind of uh, measures for controlling different sounds. And therefore it's important that I should first uh, not only measure the total sound coming from the engine, but should also be able to break it up into different sources and tackle different. In a way, for example, when you go to doctor, I mean, it's not enough that you are, you are not well. It doesn't help you. He has to find out that he will have this problem here, this problem here, this here, and then he has to work out around that to see, make sure that you know each is taken care of, and finally put it together and say, "Okay, this is the total diagnosis." Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that uh, you know you need to, you have to know how to add contribution of different sources, uh, how to subtract and find out, you know. Uh, what is more important, the less important, and so on. What do you do now? See here, the total sound pressure level of two or more incoherent sources of noise may be calculated as follows. That is, we have to add power. But we are dealing with power level. So we work backwards, write the W in a way as function of LW, and then we find this. Simple equation comes down to this. So I, I, I repeat this one to here. So I, I repeat total sound power level is equal to 10 log of you know, this 10 to the power 0 from 1 by 10 and w of different sources and add up and let that come out. At, at first sight, you might be feeling it's a very funny thing, what you do it. But actually, you know, as you start working around it, you will find that you, know, you get used to thinking in terms of decimals. A person like me, for example, who has been working for decades on this, so I directly deal with the person and even think in terms of the you know, That becomes the you know, way of uh, thinking. Anyway. Now here n denotes the total number of incoherent sources. Like machine like machines in a workshop. Like a in a workshop, you know, you may have some something there, some 
rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm, the rhythm. Everything is taking noise. And if you want to find the total power coming from that, so I have to act like this. They are incoherent. But mind you, every time it will not be incoherent because that these two sources are inherently coupled. They are coming from the same basic source. Uh, then you cannot add like this. That's why the word incoherent is important. But any anyway, good thing is, most of the time, I'll say 95 percent of the time, you will have, you will be dealing with incoherent sources. So therefore, this addition can be done by patients with 1.36. And these equation numbers are the same as in the book, so that any time you can go back and refer for more. Now, similarly, the corresponding total function of the relative point is given by this. similar expression. And also, in that same kind of these equations can also be uh, used to add contributions of different bands. Here, here these are different sources. There will be different bands, the same source. You can use that. <laughs> All right. Now, what are the implications of the Russian addition? This is very important because from this I need to now uh, tell myself how I should propose the one. So let, let's understand this very well. The logarithmic addition of power levels or strong pressure levels has some interesting implications for mass control. It may easily be verified from those equations that I wrote. 100 plus 100 is 103. In a plus, logarithmic addition I have indicated by plus in a circle. 100 plus 100 is 103. 100 plus 90 comes to 100.4 x plus x is x plus t. And it's something very interesting I tell you. I will say 0 plus 0 is also t. Because x can have any value. Okay? So I am putting x equal to 0 db. Okay? So 0 db here, 0 db here, and then it comes 0 plus t is 3 db. So you might ask that how do you make 0? I will put it this way. I will say minus 3 you know, take a source of strength minus 3, minus 3, another source of minus 3, add up and that will be minus 3 plus equal to 0. Now, the main thing I, I want you to understand is this, that because it though we call it logarithmic addition, actually it's anti-logarithmic addition. That means we are adding uh, uh, decibels which are already logarithmic units. But all the time, say, telling us that internally, you can actually have to add power and then come back. So the right word would be anti But anyway, and never mind. So we just call it a girl's name because otherwise the real thing is the thing is real. Alright. Now similarly, 10 identical sources of x dv would add up to x plus 10. Here it is for two sources, it is only 3 dv added. If 10 of them are there, it can be shown that it comes to 10 degree. Now, it's very important. Look at perception. Can you see from here? Yeah. So, uh, 3 dB increase in sound pressure level is hardly noticeable. It's very interesting, very nice thing. Uh, what I'm telling you is, if we have a machine making 100 dB of sound, and you put another machine uh, by the side, it will be only 3 dB of stuff. So you will, not, you will not even feel that there are two machines. You know, it will be just about the same song. Which I am telling you all this is that I must make use of it in my control. Like when I am designing a workshop, I should make sure that all noisy machines are put together in one corner of the workshop. So the rest of the workshop people are not disturbed on this as You make let all the noises be coming from that area and then you Make acoustic enclosure around that area and the rest of the factory can be easy. 5 dB increase in sound pressure level is clearly noticeable. That means if I put three machines together, uh, that thing comes to 5 dB extra. Then you do know yes, sound pressure increase. If you put 10 machines, 10 dB increase in sound pressure appears to be twice as loud. So it's very again very very interesting. If I put 10 machines equally noisy together, I feel some that doubled. I don't feel 10 times. <coughs> Isn't that nice? I put all 10 machines together. To me, perception-wise, 
it appears as if noise has doubled. Now similarly, 10 dB decrease in sound pressure level would appear to be half as low, indicating 50% reduction in sound pressure level. Now, this, this slide is very important for all, all of you. Uh, I am just saying consequent guideline for noise control. In a complex noisy situation, one must first identify all significant sources, rank them in descending order, and plan out a strategy for reducing the noise of the largest source of noise first, then only tackle other sources in descending order. In fact, tomorrow's lecture will be only on noise control, noise strategies. Okay? But today I am only giving the fundamentals. Okay? Then, while designing an industrial layout or the arrangement of machines and processes in a workshop, we must identify and locate the noisiest machines and processes together in one corner and isolate this area acoustically from the rest of the workshop. And further I want to tell you, it is most cost effective <coughs> to reduce all significant sources of noise down to the same desired level. Now, I, I hope I can help you. Yeah, we can be on this, on this and then I will come back to that in different. Okay, addition of the sound pressure levels of the incoherent source of noise may be done easily by making use of figure 1.2. And that I'll show you. Yeah, look at this figure. This is very interesting. So we don't have to do those calculations. Things can be very easy just from this figure. It tells me that if I want to add L1 dB to L2 dB, what I should do is I do, take the difference. Difference is that's L1 minus L2 is here. And then add this correction to the higher of the two. Let us say I'm mean, just to give you. Suppose I have two, two machines, each of 100 dB. So difference is 0, so I am here. And the correction is 3. So 100 plus 100 is now 103. Have you understood this? Or suppose I want to add 190. Now difference is 10. I go here and I find the correction is only 0.4 dB. So 100 plus 90 will be 100.4. Now, look at the implications of this. That if I have two sources uh, of 100 each, then, you know, uh, sorry, then I have to put 100. The other, if the other is 90, 90 will not be even be audible to me because that other thing will be dictated. 100 plus 90 is this 100.4. So 90 is like, the contribution of 90 is almost zero. And we can use it very nicely, uh, noise control, to bring things to that level, those things, the level in such a way that finally by tackling only something here, the whole thing is right now. And I'm talking about it tomorrow in detail. <coughs> All right. Now let us see, I have a number of sources here. Suppose now uh, I'm dealing with an engine. My exhaust noise is, let's say, 100 decibels. Uh, the body noise let's say 93 and intake noise is let's say 86 and transmission is let's say 86. Okay? And now, now I have to add without the spending time on the, on the calculator. So what, what I should do is I should start, take the lowest two, 86 and 80. I have to add differences 6. And again 6 if you see here, the correction is 1 degree. So 86 plus 80 will be 86 plus 1 which is 87. Very easy. Right? Now what I do is, now I add this 87 to 93. And difference is again 6 dB. Again correction is 1. So 93 plus 1 is 94. Okay. Now I have to add 94 to 100. Again difference is 6. Correction is 1. I have taken examples such that, I mean it becomes easy for me to say. Otherwise, of course, you can keep using this and you will have to write down on the paper. And again, so again, for the same, it's 100 pounds. Now look at this. As an engineer, what do you see? 
you have four sources of sound and that may end it. But what is finally happening is, I will be only hearing with the exhaust noise. I exhaust noise of 100, total is 101. So other sources will not even be audible to me. And therefore, if I want to make a difference, I must first tackle exhaust noise. Okay? And then let us say, I uh, this exhaust noise, I reduce but by means of a buffer or silencer, that's by 20 dB. So that means I have reduced 80, this one to 80, uh, 100 to 80, and that is here. So 80 plus 80 is 83, and then this number of 87 or so, or 88, and put together 94, 95. So that means overall sound will have come down by 6 dB if I get out that. But suppose you say, no, no, doesn't matter, anyway. let me tackle this one only. So if I don't touch the top noise, and I tackle only this last one, and even then it's zero, still nothing will happen at all. Because this, in its contribution was already almost 21 dB less, now it's 100 dB less, it doesn't mean anything. So other thing will continue. So what I'm trying to say is that, uh, we, uh, it's important that first we should rank different uh, uh, sources, arrange them in a descending order, and then tackle this one first. Unless I have put a good exhaust model of the silencer, uh, tackling against produced noise, body noise, has no meaning. Or, let me also tell you, if, if you do directly put an acoustic enclosure and reduce this 93 to let us say 70, but because this 100 is there, so, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to make you understand that in any given situation, when, when, for example, whenever I go uh, as a consultant to the entry, my first job is looking at up, looking at the first uh, identify the RCS machine, machines, of course. Okay? And then, uh, I mean, silence them in some way, so that I have other noises drowning in, then measure other one. So this is how one by one, you know, the, I can I just tell you, I, simple thing. Let us say these tables uh, represent machines. And, you know, I find that this machine is a nice thing. So if I want to measure sound coming from this machine, I have to first take care of this. So what I do, I, I, I cover it up with something temporary. And then take measurement that I can do of this table. But if this remains there or what it is, whatever I do there, I have only this noise will be heard there. I can't do that. So basically, it's important to identify uh, different sources and then, uh, then eclipse or mask one of them in this, one by one and go on measuring uh, the difference of the compressor and the of that. And then Make use of those additional subtraction for good years. So, only that of course one has to do an exercise. And uh, in this book, I have given all that, not only the procedure, but actual uh, fully solved examples. And basically, all based on my industry, the concept of experience. So, that you know, my students, you know, they really get a good feel of uh, uh, what is what. And as I was telling yesterday about industrial consultants, uh, what I have been doing is I have been involving my students in my consultancy projects. Okay. So that so that you know they directly get a hands-on experience of what is what they get. And uh, you know, they gain in a number of ways, not only I gain because I can divide that work into the you know the students, but they also gain because then you know uh, they get experience of working on the particular project. And uh, of course the industry also very happy to and know that this person uh, did his project there, etc. So that they have to get job also very easy. The same industry is very much interested in taking those to the students later on the group. Okay. Uh, <coughs> now this is uh, another important point. Equivalent noise level in a community or workplace. And that is where for today's lecture is the environment. We are not dealing with the machine, but the environment. 
So in any, any community, in a locality, you know, what might is there, and what does it mean, and what can be done about it, that's what that might mean. If one is adding more than two sources, one can still use that figure that I showed you, adding two at a time, starting from the lowest as shown in that figure. The concept of addition can also be extended to averaging of sound pressure level in a community location. Thus, the equivalent sound pressure level during a time period of eight hours may be calculated as an average of the hourly readings like this. So, you add up the same reading, put one by eight here, okay, and then you get what, for example, you know, uh, I'll just tell you here, uh, let us say there is an industry and one perpendicular uh, worker is uh, working at, on, a, on a compressor. Okay. So, what, what we do is, we have to find out whether that worker is being subjected to more noise than is good for his health. Okay. These are the, this is very important. Uh, the need to be done. I'll come to it in the stuff. Okay. So, what I'm trying to say is that we can measure every one hour and then those eight readings we put into the decade of 1.39 and that will be the equivalent model. That means our total noise is added at the linear level and put back to uh, you know, the total in the level thing, so it's classical level and that, that's the problem that we should be doing. And then later on, of course, I'll tell you how we could play with what is desirable or not. This everything is done automatically in an integrating software meter or dosing meter. Okay? In order to ensure that the worker is not subjected to more than 90 dBA or of equivalent sound pressure value to the data. Now, this is very easy these days. Uh, like, for example, a particular person who is being examined by the inspector. So when he comes in the morning to do his work, you know, they strap on the sound level meter here so that the microphone comes near the ear. Okay, it is strapped on and, and they switch it on, then just when he starts the work. So integration is not just our previous, it's every second is going on. Okay, and then at the end of eight hours, then there will be some reading. You can see that this is a good but uh, most of the time it is not done like this. Uh, what is done is that as soon as the dosage, equivalent level dosage, exceeds 90 decibel, that means the person has got the maximum sound pressure level he should have got early in the job. And he must be taken off duty. Otherwise, the appeal is becoming harder to and this is taken very, very seriously. <coughs> Probably I, I, can, I can just tell you uh, the one thing that I saw directly from the research in Australia. You know, if as soon as that level it has, it comes to the this one, not only that uh, that uh, uh, I mean reading comes, but that reading is not being taken every time. So there's a bulb, and the bulb starts flashing. You know, the bulb flashing four minutes the workshop is noticed immediately and he has to be taken off you. Now, you might be wondering then how does the factory done? I mean, if this is the kind of thing that happens, then you know, I mean, not only that person, but he's a part of the chain of action that if he stops working, then others also have to stop working. So, what they do is uh, something different. Uh, they take precautionary measures. Now there are three things we can do to make sure that the industrial worker is not subjected to more than admissible uh, sound load of uh, noise. One is, of course, that uh, we should make our machines quiet. That's the real thing I tomorrow I'll be talking about. That's the real mechanical engineering job. How we can design the machines for quietness, how we can design the workshop for quietness, how can we design the whole community for this. That is different. But this is one thing that when you are, when you are uh, you know, sourcing those machines from, which is, which is, choose a machine that is quiet. Now, okay, let me also tell you, invariably, that machine will be costlier than other machines. But then you have to ask, you know, that is it worth it? Then I, tomorrow I will tell you the complete reason why it is wiser to 
tunes that Python machine, even if it's nice here, for us, because if light plum bars will be much less than otherwise. Because what you have to do to pay the price for other uh, noisy machines, you know why that must not be bought. Anyway, that, that's the answer. Second thing is that a person is trained to work not only on a noisy machine, but also on a vital machine. So what I'm trying to say is, he's working on a grinding machine. Noise is very much more. Okay? Then, uh, after two hours, the dosage is complete, we know that's straight out. So then, he's automatically, his job is taken to another room where it's vital. So the rest of the six hours, it is less than 90 decibels. And therefore, overall dosage, you know, does not exceed what is coming. Now, third thing is that uh, a person who is uh, you know, working in a noisy machine, he is given ear buffs, either ear plugs or ear buffs. And he must use this. This is another thing I want to tell you here. That uh, I, I remember in Pitra, you know, I, I had suggested the certain measures and then uh, uh, in my next visit, that four men tells himself now. And they don't, they are like children, you know. As soon as I'm away, they take out his earmark and keep it. They think that, you know, I mean, uh, they feel very funny about uh, putting it there. Okay, so uh, then, I mean, uh, we discussed it at the National Community level. And, and now it is uh, mandatory to use it. And not only the worker, the, but the, the poor man will also be punished or penalized if he does not make sure that this person is using that ear of all the time. And not only that, poor man himself has to be using it all the time. In my see what I'm So what I'm trying to say is that there are three things that can be done. One is use ear ops or plugs. Second is, you know, you have to work uh, in, uh, uh, noisy area in uh, part of the time and quite a region at the time. Part of course is make sure that again the machines are chosen for quite as well as we But the latest uh, relative effects can be worked out. In fact, my students are part of the course, they do all the time, costing, etc. Find out whether it was more admissible to have uh, bought a quite a machine and uh, or do noise flow measures at the workshop, etc., which will be costly. Okay. Another, thing, another thing that I want to tell you is that when we take a 24 hour average, uh, we also have to uh, take into account the fact that we are more sensitive at night when I'm, we are sleeping. You know, we, we would like to have more fighter atmosphere than what it was during the day. Okay? And that is what So we do averaging for 15 hours during the day. And then 9 hours later when we look at 9, we add two extra 10 dB k. Just look at that. So we are uh, in this figure, in this number, automatically it's taken into account that the noise at night should have been 10 dB less than what it was. And that's how we put that because the LDM, day night average of sound rush. And now I also want to tell you that, you know, uh, how to measure sound power level? When we are dealing with machines, we want to find out total power coming from the machine. At the same time, my microphone picks up only pressure, it does not pick up uh, power. So how to make sure that what we measure and what we want, how to measure is related, and that is here. Measurement of sound power level. One can use the so-called survey method, where measurements are made at discrete microphone locations on the color perfect shown in figure this one. Let's see there. <coughs> see, basically what happens is that uh, we construct a hypothetical, not actual circuit, hypothetical circuit around it. So after whatever sound is coming, it has to pass through that circuit. Okay? And that's what you can see here. You know, this is the source. This is the source. And then uh, at particular distance D, you know, we imagine a surface like this. A, and then also from here and all the sides, and then we calculate like this the total surface area, okay, and add here. So, so power level is equal to average sound pressure level and all the microphones plus 10 log of measurement surface and 
and that is given in terms of dimensions and d like this. So this is what is done all the time in practice. Now I am going to tell you uh, this is the most important part uh, that now these are statutory noise limits set up by the Central Pollution Control Board uh, on the advice of the National Committee for Noise Pollution Control. And the Ministry of Environment and Forest issues no weather notifications, and those notifications have the power of law. And power in the sense, when I say mandatory, what you know what I am trying to tell you is that if that those are exceeded, the person from the Pollution Control Board can come and just make you stop. Whatever you are doing, they have the power to stop the factory right away, straight away. You know, you won't believe what it is happening. In, imagine, you know, something like, you know, a villa factory, you know, the, the size, you know, of many, many acres. And just in three minutes, they have the power. And there's no appeal at that time, you get stay out of this and nothing. So what I'm trying to tell you is that, you know, uh, you have to know those limits, you have to design for those limits, and make sure that, you know, uh, your plan does not get into that kind of situation. And that is where industrial consultancy comes very important. In fact, uh, I was telling you yesterday, I told this one, that this committee was set up in, uh, in 1998, and I was chairman of this national committee for about 18 years. Okay, and it was during that time that all these weather uh, notifications were issued. And I'm going to give you uh, uh, something about it. It also tells you about the community and various pressure groups and uh, things like that. All right. Now, now these are the ambient air quality standards in respect of noise for industrial workers. Look at this. In an industrial area, during the daytime, average or equivalent should not exceed 75. Night time, 70. Commercial area, uh, during the day, the equivalent level should not exceed 65. And at night, 55. Again, again that, that 10 dB difference you can see here all the time. That because we are more sensitive at night, so admissible levels are 10 dB lower than during the day. <coughs> Residential area, 55. And in the so-called silent zones like hospitals, etc., okay, 50 maximum during the day and 40 during the night. And now you know why I am telling you 40 is as good as zero. So level, level is never less than 40. In fact, I, remember, I know in Bangalore, you know, I was, I was living on campus. Uh, you know, industrial science campus is like a forest. Okay, uh, but still, at my home. At 2 a.m., when the only little sound is coming from the refrigerator at home, still it was more than 40 days. I have otherwise 2 kilometers away from any road. But that's the kind of level all of us living in the cities, we are being exposed to that we like it or not, whether we go it or not. That's the kind of level. Okay? Now, let me also tell you this. Uh, uh, when I say daytime, daytime means uh, Morning 6 o'clock to 9 o'clock at night, or in India now it's 10 o'clock. So that those are the hours during which everything is done. And the night of course the remaining 8 or 9 hours. And let me also tell you here on the practical side, you know, in India we don't have really separate zones. <coughs> Though I mean all these things assume that they are zones, they are nothing. For example, you have any area you go to, let's say, a supermarket, and then you know, you know that will become different by definition. It is a uh, commercial area. <coughs> but you will find on the top of that, that building has a residential part. What do you do? Do you call it residential? Do you call it commercial? Okay, so you have that kind of situation. Not only that, you will find that uh, there is a factory, even in case uh, number two. Uh, Old, uh, let's say, textile country, and around that, the residential area is covered. So, the body of the residential area or industrial area. So, in fact, this is uh, one thing uh, which has really complicated the things a lot. 
when all these limits were made, the idea was to you know, decrease or uh, reduce the number of uh, uh, court cases. But if court cases have increased because of this, that person who is uh, living there teaches his residential area to make sure that noise that my residence does not go beyond that because of the future. And he says, you know, my factory has been there before even that I was born. And you can't say that I will have an ancient area. And I will go by it. But it's an industrial area. So, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, we have had to do, we have a lot of, uh, I mean, with that table, we had to have so many of these in, in mixed area, what the housing, the factory houses, things like that. And, uh, but of course, many times, even that, uh, you know, does not help because people have uh, so much hostility for our and neighbors, and therefore, whatever he says, is people are not ready to listen. And he, he only talks that because he immediately go to this inspector of police and he'll get it this time or that and threaten each other all the time. And, uh, and all, you know, you can, you know, our courts in uh, uh, India are so busy, their backlog already so much that a thing like this, you know, will have to wait for months even for the first case. So, so if the stay order is given and the factory is stopped, you can imagine the loss. So many times when I am called to come to this, I, I first tell them uh, you know, the overall situation and then say that, you know, the only way out is you come to us. Okay? And then I offer myself outside, I said, you know, my free services, sit on the table, you can work it out in two hours and I So invariably, uh, it works. Because when I tell them that, you know, whether you like it or not, or, you know, even the first hearing will be after three months, imagine how what happens to your business. Look at, you put a cost. So that damage any is happening to you. Then what kind of wisdom is there that, you know, rest is there. So I tell them, okay, this is what needs to be done. It will cost so much, you bear this much cost, that this person bears this much cost, and that I will design and get it done. And then you leave happily after the okay, So this is how uh, most of the time it works. Uh, but of course, where it doesn't work, it's only because people uh, flex their muscles more uh, than their brains. All right. Now this is a very important thing. Uh, noise pollution regulation and control. This, this is what the according to our first of the first two years of you know. Then uh, this version of it came out, and over the years it has been through the mark. And the latest is this a loudspeaker or public address system shall not be used except after obtaining written permission from a party. You know, <laughs> again, I, am, I should not be saying it, but we are all part of our society. Corruption is so much that even this people uh, know how to get around. To settle scores in each other. But main thing is, when I said some written permission, we wanted to make sure that the pollution control board man, uh, he does not, he has to give a written permission, that means he signs on that, he is responsible for that. So that means he must understand the problem, what is achievable, what is not, etc. Now we took that before signing on the document. Okay? But Many times the person signs because of the rupees that he gets and not because he has understood the problem. So in fact, this, this thing we you know is so difficult to implement. You know, they are so much used to that, so every license only means pay money and get the license. And not because of what the implication of it that person has supposed to understand and then say whether it should be done or not. So therefore now I uh, just like to tell you what we have done now. We have made that person who signs a party to the whole thing. I repeat, if tomorrow if the conflict arises, this person who has signed, he is as much a party to the whole thing as anything else. So not only others will be fighting against each other, he will also be involved because he signed on it. Okay? And now what has happened? You might think it has solved the problem, it has not. It only means it costs more money to get that license than other 
you know, it's a very important situation, you know. And, uh, in fact, uh, I once I remember, uh, you know, we had a meeting the Central Christian Control Board, and uh, when I came out to the office uh, to, collect, to collect my uh, traveling expenses, etc., that, uh, that the clerk asked me, so, sir, are you here? You know, in Hindi, are you here? I just told him that now today we are late, this, you know, that this should not be exceeded. And he says in typical UP Hindi, he says, So I have to know that you 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 have to know that This is the, you know, it was very painful to hear that, but the important thing is that anything you do uh, can be missed. Anyway, uh, now this, please listen to this. A loudspeaker or a public address system or any sound producing instrument or a musical instrument or a sound amplifier shall not be used at night time except in closed premises for communities within, like auditorium, concerts, room, community hall, banquet hall, the building. The main thing what we are saying is do what you want within within your uh, lake uh, But don't put a loudspeaker outside to disturb the public. I mean, main thing is, again and again I am telling this one, I have every right to enjoy it in my privacy. <coughs> but I have, that is no reason that my neighbor so sleep should be disturbed because I am at the party. So this is the general principle. Now, the noise level at the boundary of the public place where a loudspeaker, a public address system, or any other noise source is being used, shall not exceed 10 dB above the Indian noise standards for this. So this is a very important thing we have done, and we have succeeded, even if politicians are giving speeches. All we are saying is, if you have, this is a wrong at least, the, the function is going to be held. Okay? So, we all can let's say 100 meters uh, start, start the first house. Now, at that house, sound level should not exceed by more than 10 dB of what it would be if this function was not going on. And this is very easy to do. All we are saying is that start, uh, start this from before actually actual function start, the person is uh, you know uh, uh, using this uh, uh, amplifier, so the amplifier of the loudspeaker system. He he adjusts the amplification in such a way that the first single person is speaker is talking, uh, that level at uh, that house should not exceed the level. It can be done in five minutes and someone stand there, measure the sound there, and this person is adjusting his uh, amplifier above. So this is working. We don't, now we don't say permission should be given or not. That becomes a political issue. All we make sure the person who is uh, controlling the amplifier, uh, he is responsible for everything. Simple. Okay. Another thing is the peripheral noise of a privately owned sound system or sound producing instrument shall not at the boundary of a private place exceed by more than 5 dB the ambient level. So now this is very important, you know, because often in localities, uh, people just don't care for the neighbors. So now what we are saying is you do whatever you are doing, but at the neighbor's house, an uh, additional sound should not be more than high dB of what is coming. And this is, this is again being done very nicely. It's very easy. Uh, now, sound level meters have been given to police. I, I know in Bangalore, uh, 2,000 sound level meters have been bought. Similarly, other places, probably also must have gone to Skota. But what I'm trying to tell you is, now, most of the police stations have simple sound level meters. With, even a normal policeman can be taught in five minutes how to use it. And all he does is, uh, when the complaint arises, he visits that place, measures the sound pressure level, and then asks the function to stop, maybe. He switched off for two minutes, again measures the difference in total ID in the problem. And he has the right to get that uh, 50 stop. Another thing that we have done is that we have given the power to uh, police inspectors uh, to get something stopped or otherwise. There is nothing like, oh, you file a case and there is a challenge and there is nothing. 
he just, I mean, he has the copies of his uh, dozen notifications, okay, against that, that is done, and gets a missile of that in the stock, it was a so and so, simple. And that is what is called. Anybody can see that. At least in Bangalore it's working. Let me just tell you, I don't know who the computer is, uh, you know, uh, but I'm not associated with the Tamil Nadu State Board. Uh, but I am sure it must be because generally Tamil Nadu uh, State Board uh, has been doing things very nicely, whatever we do, there are these interactors. Uh, no arms can be used in silent zones or during night time in residential areas except during a public emergency. Sound emitting firecrackers shall not be burst in silent zone or during night time. Sound emitting construction equipment shall not be used or operated during night time in residential areas. This you might have seen it very much being done. Earlier you used to have construction workers working even at night and you know uh, spoiling your sleep. Now go where it is in Bangalore, nothing can be heard after 10 o'clock due to construction. There are including the roads. Everything stops. Uh, generator set. 
deficit. Okay. So India has the problem of power scarcity. in how the government has set up a number of power plants, hydro power plants, and atomic power plants. Therefore, most of the manufacturers have their own captive power plants based on diesel fuel. The relevant diesel notification of the Ministry of Environment and Forests describes as follows. The maximum permissible sun pressure level for huge diesel generator sets with rated capacity up to 1000 kW KVH shall not be 75 dB, shall, sorry, shall be 75 dB per meter per It should not exceed this. And this is done. You know, when I say uh, this is done, it's very, very naturally we have been able to do it. It took us quite some time to understand and enforce it. Now what we have done is, we have put the onus of this noise reduction on the engine manufacturers. I mean, what used to happen is, engine manufacturers say, no, I sell my engine like this. Now it's other, your business if you want to reduce the cost. Again, you go to the user, he says, what do I do? I want this engine for this, all of them, that's so noisy. I chose one of them. So they were just trying to uh, escape. So we said, now we have put it on paper that the engine manufacturer will not be able to sell that engine, he will not go to the factory unless it, he has also designed and fabricated and makes available uh, acoustic enclosures to make sure that with acoustic enclosures, the sound pressure level at one meter around shall not exceed 100 So this is being done all over the country. Of course, I, I, I should be here to know this because I, mean, I come to know that there are places like Agra, etc. Uh, there are nothing about this. Those people just won't do and not do anything about it. I mean, that kind of uh, mafia, that kind of thing has gone on for so long that when the local police finds themselves completely, you know, uh, they are incapable of uh, enforcing. So, in fact, uh, <coughs> We, when we were a committee, we used to hold meetings at different places. And then we were told, don't put it in Agra. We cannot, we cannot uh, you know, ensure your safety. Even holding a meeting in Agra, you know, that is just that bad. But anyway, what I'm saying, leaving out some of those pockets, uh, which probably had a local problem. Most of the country now, we are able to enforce it, and on the whole, life is much better. So here I am saying the diesel generator sets should be provided with integral acoustic enclosure at the contracting stage itself. And if it is more than 1000 kVA, then it, it doesn't have to have an enclosure around it. It has to be put in a room which is acoustically treated and that, that whole room acts as an acoustic enclosure. <laughs> Noise from these sets can be controlled by providing an acoustic enclosure or by treating the room acoustically at the user set. Now, this is not now at the engine engine, this is the user set. The acoustic enclosure or acoustic treatment room shall be designed for minimum of 25 decibel insertion noise or for meeting the engine noise at the retail risk on the higher side. The measurement for insertion loss may be done at different points at 0 0.5 inches of the acoustic enclosure. The DG set shall be provided the proper exhaust water with such a loss of minimum 25 dB. The manufacturer should offer the user a standard acoustic enclosure of 25 dB such a loss and also a suitable exhaust water with such a loss of So, this is all major uh, uh, manufacturers like Mahindras or Philosophers, uh, you know, or uh, in fact, there are so many of them, everybody knows has this proper form, they have trained it. In fact, I personally have trained more than 100 of these uh, industries, you know, to design for themselves, fabricate, operate for them. So that, that we have been doing. Even, in fact, I was telling yesterday about the book, you know, the book, you know, this also, the book I made about 454 slides, and I have training teachers of different training colleges, so that they can teach their students this course as elective and make sure that their uh, employability also increases. Because all industries have noise problem and this subject is not now brought in mechanical engineering. So this is what is being now introduced slowly. 
and also now uh, this is large and it's a portable gensex of 0.5 to 2.5 and here the formula is a little different otherwise basically it's the same concept and now this noise limit uh, for fire hackers this gave us an excellent headache and mainly because of common okay because we have places like shimkashi etc okay they uh, they just uh, don't let you do anything in fact i had a personal uh, experience there i'm talking of 20 years ago uh, yeah 2000. I was president of the Uskur Society of India and we had a function at Shiva. It was hosted uh, by the local college. And uh, so in the morning after the inauguration, uh, at over and after my gift given a normal speech, I came down to the uh, IS and uh, there was a lot of commotion on the, on, the, on the entrance. I said, what is going on? He said, they want to talk to you. So they had come to know that I am that culprit sitting in the Delhi, you know, making life difficult for them. Okay? So, uh, anyway, so I had to excuse myself, went out, of course, I don't, I don't know how it, so somebody uh, did the job, you know, interpreter, etc., and uh, then uh, told me what they were feeling, that they were feeling that I am taking away their livelihood by saying that, you know, you are reducing the noise for the characters by 20 decibels. So when it was going to 145, it was very, very high. And I said, make it 125. And I also was telling them how to do it. They were not able to regulate the listen. And then, uh, you know, after they put arm down, you know, after the 20, 25 minutes, uh, then I said, listen. I just told, I said, all I'm saying is that you put half the explosive in each cracker. You know, I'm not saying don't make the cracker. You put the reduce the quantity of the explosive to 50 percent, and it is done. And then they try to tell me if if it doesn't make noise, then what kind of cracker it is? Now who will buy your crackers? And then again, you know, they found out, and they you try to use that on me. They said in the foreign country there is no such there are no such limits. So then I had to tell them that in foreign countries nobody plays the cracker in hand. Here our children they hold the cracker in hand, just you know this much in the ear, okay, and play. Nobody is allowed to do that. We go to any country like that. Let me let me tell you about Germany. You know all fire crackers used to be in a stadium. Their audience is sitting all in the stands, complete city. Okay, yes. And, and every anybody is minimum 50 meter away from where the dagger is going to be explored. So there's no problem. So I was telling the North Square law. You know the North Square law. What you are hearing already is more than 30 decibels less than what somebody will hear at <coughs> one end of the day. The problem is not there at all. Anyway, so after all that then Finding an important what we are going to do is that if you don't want to do it, we will do it. We'll make sure that the explosive quantity that we get from uh, you know this uh, uh, department of explosives will be 50% of what we have been getting till today. It's finished. When that is done, either you make only 50% of the crackers or make the same quantity of crackers but with half the quantity instead. They were reasonably convinced, but I could see that you know, it will take time. But actually, same thing happened. By that time, I went back, I came to know that those people have completely taken out whatever I told. And then, it actually, uh, this battle went on, you know, uh, with the courts, the high court, and finally it went into Supreme Court. And recent now, Supreme Court did a very good job. <coughs> they directed, they directed the government to reduce the quantity of explosive sanction which had been to 50 percent of what uh, it was simple. After that, let them do whatever they want to do with that 50 percent. And and now let me tell you, problem has really been solved. Nobody wants to reduce the number of crackers, so they reduced the quantity. They are almost 25 degrees quieter than otherwise. 
And that's why you will find those of you who are old enough to have experienced that over the years, our Diwali and all that is a little quieter than our other things do. Okay, so this is how the story <laughs> Now this is regarding noise limits for bikers. You know, up to a few years ago, uh, our, our bikers were known to be very, very noisy. So noisy that Indian uh, automobiles could not even be sold in Europe. Okay? And so it, it was, when this became like that, only then the industry was ready to listen to us. And that is how, after lots of discussions and uh, negotiations, we agreed on these noise limits. For uh, small two-wheelers, uh, you know, for fast noise, noise should not exceed 75, etc. And four-wheelers, uh, they have 74 for cars, for trucks, etc. Uh, maximum is 80. And you might ask, how will it measure that you will see? You know, just to give you some idea, please, please look at the board. The picture, you know, I mean, we mark a point here. We have one microphone or some meter here at 7.5 meters, another here. And then we go mark 10 meters, 10 meters on this side, and it's another line. The vehicle comes at constant speed of two thirds of the rate of speed. Okay? And as soon as it touches this line, the driver is supposed to you know, pump in the accelerator and keep it pressed all the way till the back of this comes out of this. And these microphones or side sound meters record the highest sound pressure level during that run. And this is done again on the reverse direction and then three times that an average of that is taken and that should not exceed the, those limits that are given here. So this is, uh, is, is now standard practice. Any new vehicle uh, will not get a tire testing certificate for automotive such as such and in Pune unless this test is found. And this can be done because it's very easy, we are doing it right at the beginning. The vehicle will not even be allowed to enter the country, you know, or get the hit the road if this, this certificate is not. So here we have full control. Only problem comes in. After the vehicle becomes old, we put on maintain them properly, and then it becomes difficult to you know hold the stabilizers. And this I just told you. And now this is I think, but yesterday I also told something. Shall I spend some time on this, or uh, all of you attended yesterday's lecture? What does science mean? Yes or no? No, sir. They have not attended, sir. Huh? You can have some time on this. Okay, yeah, please, uh, you know, you like to also understand uh, this basic thing the noise control. All of you, please, just two minutes. This is the last slide. Now, let us say uh, I have an engine, and this engine is running this compressor. So, now, please, no talking, please. Please, be fair to others. Okay, what I am saying is that noise is being produced by the engine as well as the compressor, but then the engine makes more noise than the compressor. But never mind that. What I am trying to say is that now this needs air both for breathing as well as cooling. That air is sucked in here by the using the suction side of this fan. Okay, and what we do is we provide these clothes uh, to make sure that all the fresh air uh, is guided on the heat of surfaces of the engine. And finally, I, we don't want it to be wasted around the whole uh, uh, enclosure. We use another one force exhaust here, so that this is air, after get, taking the heat from here, is pushed out. And again, we have to meet another parallel coupler muffler, one muffler here, one muffler here, to make sure that the engine drives does not go out of this side or this here. Now, Another thing that is very important is that uh, we have this acoustic enclosure and uh, we uh, make sure that noise outside is at least 20 dB less than the noise and outside is less than inside. So that is what is called insertion loss of the enclosure. 
And I was telling you that the first thing that is now have to be designed a minimum 25 degrees such as this. Okay, what is this enclosure? Look at this. We have a, uh, you know, this sound absorbing material which can be, uh, most of the time it is much mineral wool, it can be gas, it can be glass wool, it can also be uh, polyurethane foam, etc. Okay? And then, uh, it is generally typically about the 4 inches or 10 centimeters uh, thickness. And in the market, it's available uh, in blankets of 2 inch uh, uh, thickness, 4 inches thickness. So that is this. And then, uh, we use perforated plate, uh, which allows the acoustic waves to interact. At the same time, mechanically, it is, it is uh, you know, holding it. That's uh, this is a perforated plate, highly perforated plate. Okay? Now, and this is insertion loss I was telling you, minimum 25 degrees. Similarly, insertion loss of this muffler also is minimum 25 degrees. And this also. But it doesn't end there. Because all this is a, what we call airborne sound. But there is another culprit, and that is structure bone sound. What happens is, unbalanced forces to the engine or compressor, uh, they excite the ground cable. So for that, what we do is, we make sure that they are first balanced at site and then put on a common plate and this plate in turn is supported on these two very well designed vibration isolators. Generally we work for 90% transmissibility I'm sorry, 90% absorption, 10% transmissibility. Okay, and so this is that now uh, again another block and then comes the ground. No, but what happens is, I told you that 90% uh, isolation is given, but this 10% is bad enough. How bad I can tell you. Now it makes, it sets this into vibration, and it sets it into this into vibration, and then this flow starts vibrating, and along the flow now, structure bone sound waves, as I was studying about waves, air is bone, this is structure bone. And whole flow starts vibrating, and then, for example, you know, it will set this wall into vibration, and wall is in some kind of other flow, that flow will start vibrating. In fact, if you have a multi-story building that we tell you, complete building will be vibrating just because of one machine of that value. You know, and all this are in the practical side. Okay, therefore it's very important that we design these isolators not just for 90% of absorption for 95%, so only we allow 5% to go. And further what we do is, we make sure that, we look at this one, viscoelastic pads here, that the enclosure is such a sitting like, so any vibration of this should not be passed on to this, so vice versa, any vibration coming from this side does not go to the ground. Not only that, now, to make sure that these vibrations do not pass on to this or vice versa, any vibrations or waves here do not do. So we provide the foam rubber uh, sleeves or seal, you know, this or that is, for any other open here okay, as well as here. And not only that, but pump will be vibrating and we don't want this vibration to go into this one. So we provide bellows here. Bellows here and also bellows here. Okay, so this is just a schematic of an acoustic enclosure used for noise control of an engine driven pump or compressor. Okay, uh, but then of course, so when you look at my book in this one chapter, so please think every part of the document is now outside, so everything is available. So this is the book, you know, just to, uh, I was telling yesterday. You know, this book is uh, very special, not just because it's written by me, but somebody else. Uh, you know, we had a uh, you know, facility for research in technical acoustics uh, uh, funded by Department of Science and Technology. They gave us around one and a half load of rupees. And uh, for 16 years we ran that uh, thing and trained people both from the street as well as faculty and even in colleges. And uh, when I was retiring, uh, then I was persuaded to write a book which uh, can be used. And in fact, uh, not only that, DSP was very kind to me. Uh, they gave me actually sufficient money for me, you know, uh, to write a book. Not only that, good money for my secretaries, 
but when they call the drawings and everything. So in other words, the three book was commissioned by government of India. Okay, and that is how uh, this book was published by uh, IASC Press in collaboration with World Scientific Publishers Singapore. But what happened, you know, after it was published, uh, we realized that again our students could not buy this because they they costed it as sixty five dollars. Now sixty five dollars may exceed five thousand five hundred rupees for a book like that. So it took me one to one and a half years to persuade them to bring out Indian edition or student edition. Any of them are brought, and now it is just available to you for 800 rupees. Even the further also 20 percent discount they give. So I am saying 6 to 6 700 rupees you can have this book. And this book is very special in the sense that there are no mathematical derivations. I only used all my industrial experience of the <coughs> uh, to give you, you know, concept, physical concepts, then kinetics, then general design principles. And then you know uh, 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 how to calculate the performance, etc., etc. All hard examples, and unsolved exercises with answers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Not only that, uh, you know I have been offering courses like this in Bangalore for certified teachers, then IIT Guwahati, almost for 35, then the uh, uh, IIT Bhubaneswar for almost 45, then Pune uh, and uh, Hyderabad. So, what I mean, all around 400 teachers have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, trained on this, this. And even for courses, these courses also, all money was provided to me by government of India. So, so, nobody had to pay anything of financial in the pocket. And all the teachers, their expenses were taken care of completely, including the travel to come and this. Okay? So, this, this, this is what I just want to tell you. And, uh, yeah, this is the last one. So these are special features of book. books are, it's based on my four decades experience in postgraduate teaching of financial education in the Chinese, as well as industrial concepts. <coughs> the stress is on physical concepts, graphs, tables, formulae, solid examples, and unsolved exercises. And mind you, in this one, uh, when I teach this, when I follow this book, it's also, I give open book examination. So, you know, because basically I am not testing memory. Okay, all open book examination, test, etc. And problems that are given are design problems. Mm -hmm. So complete design. So that there is nothing like you can directly see. At the same time, if you have understood what is to be done, then actually Parmuri, etc. are given and then you can do that. It just choose mathematical variations so as to make the book suitable for that study. The book is directed as much to the industrial and automobile engineers and designers as to the senior design. Incidentally, because I have been consulted to a lot of industries, uh, more books have been bought by industry than by uh, colleagues. Okay. It fulfills the requirements of an elective pre graded course for senior undergraduate students of mechanical engineering. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If you have any questions, you can ask. That is 
So, so it, it is not important that they are not able to reduce the zero can never get this zero. So if I am able to reduce the zero, it won't become zero. Ah, yeah. And it doesn't have to be zero. What I am better telling you that even if uh, we are not making any sound, still level is 40 degrees in terms of atmosphere. So, as I said, setting in uh, anybody, all of us living in the cities, we cannot come down to below 40 anyway. But anyway, all that is not important, it's not cost effective at all to design for reducing noise more than 25. That's why I'm sending you for acoustic enclosures, so everything is designed for 25. That's good idea. That is the most cost effective. When I say cost effective, it's really important to understand. By reducing by first 10 decibels, let us say, cost is X rupees. Okay? If I want to do it 20 dB, it will not be just 2 X, it will be 10 X. You know, first reduction is easy. Next reduction is more difficult and costly. And again, further even one degree may be costing us so much as us particular. So, so it's not costly that way at all to over reduce. And good thing is, it's not necessary to over reduce because if, if whatever I'm talking to you, if you feel it is, it has come down to one fourth of the intensity, you know. It's feasible to recreate the things which you have delivered right now. We have a device. Whether it is feasible to recreate or rejuvenate the things which you delivered. Whether that, 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 that flexibility is there, whether it is feasible to create that such a device. And uh, since we have uh, many engineers, body engineers. No, no. Uh, it is not a device. Uh, these are a set of strategies by which noise is controlled. And the model factory is exactly on this. He is talking about all the statistics. And then you can ask me that question again. And then you can talk about that. These are the basic principles. You know, I will expect, as a mechanical engineer, uh, if you come to me, I would like to help you to design the machine for quietness, rather than try to first have a noisy machine and then try to do something. That is much costly. Prevention is better than cure. I know our noise controller source is the most cost effective. So tomorrow I will be telling you all that how to design a machine for quietness, how to design a factory for quietness. We will not over it. Thank you, sir. And uh, it is feasible to touch with the uh, drama and effect that uh, it would be better in tomorrow's lecture or what is that? Drama and effect. Drama and effect. What is that? So this is related to sound and that. So, no, I am not a acoustic. Uh, no, a sound that we don't have any such No, no such uh, Raman effect is related to. Well, there, there, are, there are other effects we can talk about, but not Raman. Okay, fine. Thank you, thank you.
take what they ask you, like that, as a human, like you have to ask you to counter problem. And then tackle that problem in such a way that you turn it into an opportunity. In other words, you become your own leader. Among students, sir? First, you become your own leader. Other things we want to discuss other than how to manage their business. And then you take control of yourself. You become independent. You will be talking to yourself about what you have done, how much you are succeeding, why you are saying, how the same, etc. And tackle everything at that time. You know, it is a thing. You have become a clean. What should I say? There is a particular wrong habit. Always looking to somebody else to do for us. Please, can you? Please be kind to others. Ah, yeah, what I am trying to say is that if you uh, really make sure that you have double the right habits of self study, self criticism, self appraisal, you know, you will become so independent and so successful that others will follow you automatically. So, so don't let anything be used for others. That is for them to do whatever. But make sure that you tell yourself that I will do it. I have done it. I will succeed. You know, all the time, carry on that internal dialogue. Okay? So that you really take uh, control of what you are doing. I, I, that's why I gave you an example you know, of, let's say, you are going on, on, that is, on a mountain. Okay? Now, at some time you feel very tired, exhausted, disheartened, depressed. You sit down and then, you know, uh, you say, oh my God, I go there and I'm still there only after so many days. So instead of that now, for a change, look down, don't look up. Look down. And with respect to drone and congratulate yourself. I have gone all the way from the drone there, here. Okay? See, to, to further progress, you need to look up. But to keep yourself going, we look down. To congratulate yourself on already what we have achieved. <coughs> Many times what happens is we are, we are almost all the time looking only up and get disheartened. So when you, let's say after a day's work, when you go to bed, just for a few minutes, just mentally play over the day, your day started. And you find all small things about which you should be happy with. And then you take yourself. So all the time, keep a track of the right things that you done rightly. And you keep a record. And whenever you are depressed or you feel disheartened, open that and look at that and say, yeah, I could do that, I could do this, I could do this. So in the, in the process, you will find you feel charged again and next day with a new enthusiasm is coming. So all the time, for the last three days, I have been telling you, this is what I did. I am not just uh, preaching. All my life I did this. You know, and that is, you know, uh, what brought me to what I am. I have no money at home, no guidance at home, no, nothing at all. And still from starting with zero, I came to this level. And I found this approach. And this works. So what I am trying to say is talking about leadership and all that. Leadership. You understand? It's not important. Actually, it's not important. You are important to yourself. And you have all the means to help yourself. Hi. It works. Thank you. Sir, can I talk in Hindi? In Hindi, I can talk in Hindi. No, no. Sir, my question is, now we are developing on electrical vehicles, sir. The future is depending on electrical vehicles. Yeah. So, will it impact any sound uh, compared to the petrol and diesel vehicles in fact? Will it be equal? I need the sound, sir. 
No, no. It kept the electric vehicle is much quieter uh, than the old diesel. But for increasing its speed, there is electric vehicle. No, not just that. What happens is, <laughs> you know, in internal combustion engine, you have uh, explosive explosions taking place cycle after cycle uh, in the cylinder. And that is what excites the whole cylinder block into vibration. Now you don't have that electrical wave. You have motor. The motor is running at a constant speed. There is no reciprocating motion which makes noise. So reciprocating engines are essentially basically noisy because of reciprocating motion. With electrical vehicles, it's all only electric. See, actually if you look at the environment in general, uh, you have not solved the problem by having electric vehicles, you are only transferred it. Because for electric vehicles, you are using electricity, which again has been generated in those uh, similar thing by Indians only, only thing is not here, but elsewhere outside the city. <laughs> noise has produced out of the city, you are only doing that. Instead of noise being producing there, you bring it there. But never mind, that the power. Electric vehicles, uh, uh, are very well, very much quieter, in fact, almost like it's a 20 25 degree quieter than those driven by internal combustion engines. Okay? So, that, that in fact, that is the whole reason why everything started. Okay? Uh, so, therefore, noise generally will not be a problem, but let me tell you, noise is also a problem in electric vehicles for two reasons. Uh, one is uh, transmission. From speed of typically let's say 3000 rpm or 15 rpm, you know, that one, but finally you are coming down to where it is few rpm, 100, 100, 200. So whenever the, whenever the gear ratio is so much, you will find that you have not, that the, your gearbox will be much noisier than other ones. So in a typical electric vehicle, it's the, it's the transmission sound uh, that really bothers you. And second thing is that uh, even the tire noise, which otherwise is relatively less, in electrical vehicle, it stands out at higher speeds. Not that because it's more, but because others are less. It's not related. So that, that, that is another thing that you have problem. Now there is a third kind of problem, and that is when your vehicles are very quiet. Uh, Outsiders are not warned. The person who is coming ahead of you, he doesn't know that you are coming behind him. So you, you are like, not making any noise. So now this has become such a problem that all electric vehicles, they will have the, they will be fitting a warning device, producing a special sound so that you know the vehicle is coming that you should get on the horse on side. So now electric vehicles are growing up their own problems. <laughs> That's what happens is like, you know. So this is one of those things. But anyway, what I am trying to say is that uh, essentially uh, what I am telling to this book, it's just a uh, nice book for self-reading. You don't know, need a teacher. You can just think of it and do it. Okay, there you know you will find that you will get all the fundamentals, all the strategies for life. So what happens is when you have a new situation like exactly like this, all you do is close the book, okay, sit down and then analyze it, from the basic principles that you learn. Okay? And when you do that, you will find that you will, you will be able to put down the problems and possible solutions. Okay? And then of course, you can go back to the book once to make sure that you, know, you choose the right kind of uh, things that can be integrated for the design of the vehicle. Best thing is, design the vehicle for quite minutes. <coughs> you know, that is what I was trying to tell you, like for example, I gave an example of Indica. You know, I was a consultant for Tata Motors. So I only helped them to design it for five minutes. If later on they had that car and that was the Python, it is very, very costly, very big time consuming cost. So all that's my stress is on designing the five minutes. And that tomorrow's lecture will be on strategies for that. So maybe we can answer, discuss that later. Thank you, sir. Two minutes left. Uh, uh, 
is it true that the sound produced on winter times is more louder than on uh, summer times? Like, uh, I, I read it on an article on Sunday, like, uh, there's in uh, places like Tamil Nadu, sir, uh, they say uh, Margali Masam, the sound from, uh, from temples, it will be uh, more louder on uh, winter times than on summer uh, times. Yeah, I'm not very
I am in the state of getting bored. So, with the question of comparison. Okay, anyway, same thing happened about choice of pressure. It was just simple that mechanical engineering is the engineering. I'm just using the words of our teachers. Okay? I mean, they had only mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, civil engineering. And then during that time, actually, the particle engineering started in the laboratory. Okay? There was there were no computers, no computer science, no information technology, all that what we know today. You know, they are just not there. And out of different branches, mechanical was most desirable and popular, mainly because all engineering is highly mechanical. I am just again using the same same stress that my teachers use by describing it. So what I am trying to say is we were completely brainwashed, I mean without further much thinking. To go into the and I can also tell you something further. We are the kind of pre engineering class. The results used to come the newspaper, and uh, so the so first 250 lakhs, they were all in the newspaper, the names, everything. So, the view. First 235 of that list joined the Yale Engineering College. So, that hands us in a choice for college. I think because Yale Engineering College was one of the best. In Country, okay, and so therefore, that's it. Similarly, out of 235, almost the first 75 joined mechanical engineering. So that must be the conclusion. So things are just like that. Right? So, so you have to understand that environment of 1962, and then you will you know why I am then. But all I think about now, asking that question in more serious way. I just told myself. That now I am in it and I am going to be the best of it. That's it. That's what I have done all my life. Any, anything, anything which came before me, I accepted it fully. You know, many times what we do is we don't accept fully. For no reason. So, in that process, person who has second thought, uh, it's like, you know, person who has all the time going to set a second opinion to a doctor. He is not believing the first doctor and therefore the body will not get healed at all. So, so I never let that happen. Whatever I, uh, it happened or it took, I, I decided, that's it. I never looked back. Everything I accepted 100%. And that's the real secret of my success. I succeeded in everything I did. Mainly because I never looked back. There was no reluctance at all to the subconscious mind. And this is what people want to learn from me. This is what I want to tell you. That whatever you, uh, you are in, accept it fully. And then only move forward. And in my, my case, always happens. Always I succeeded. In the last few days, I have been telling you the kind of things I have been able to do. I mean, Starting from there and uh, talking to school, and I had my father could not even afford to send to college. So I have hopes and well that India has to be a nice scholarship. And then engineering college, then English of science, getting selected, total military, etc., etc. Everything was because whatever I did, I did the full accomplishments. And that's the second thing. So that's the, you want to learn something, get it what you Thank you. Thank you, sir. Looking forward for tomorrow's session. Thank you, sir. Thank you.